So now we move uh, to South America, and I will ask uh, uh, Dr. Ignacio Pavlovsky to make a presentation uh, on the South America, uh, which will be uh, followed uh, by a, a video. Ignacio. Thank you, Chairman. It's a very great privilege for me uh, to be speaking um, for my region in front of all of you. Well, OSAF, it's an organization that groups 39 organizations from 11 different countries in South America. What do we do in OSAF is we hold all these organizations that are mainly racetracks, the jockey clubs, the stud books, the breeders, and the owners association. And our job is to harmonize, integrate, in the high standards of vindications of horse racing in South America for the only purpose of the welfare of our industry and horse racing. Our main racetracks in South America are from Argentina, Hipódromo Argentino de Palermo, Hipódromo de San Isidro, Hipódromo de La Plata, Hipódromo de San Luis, which is in the middle of the country, from Brazil, Hipódromo de La Gavia, the Juque Club Brasileiro in Rio de Janeiro, Ciudad de Jardim, located in Sao Paulo, from Chile, Hipódromo de Chile, the Club Hípico Santiago, and Valparaíso Sporting Club. Hipódromo de las Américas, in Mexico DF, from Panama. Hipódromo Presidente Ramón, from Perú. Hipódromo de Monterrico, from the Jockey Club de Perú in Lima. And Hipódromo Nacional de Maronias, located in Montevideo, Uruguay. These are our individual figures but, uh, of the countries, but they are going to be held in the, um, in the presentation for you, and I will go to the global figures of OSAF. OSAF countries organizes every year nearly 22,000 races, which represent 14% of the races that are organized in the world, with 29,000 runners, which means 12.5% of the runners of the world, our, our average start per horse is 7.1, which a little bit over the rest of the world. Our purse money is nearly $159 million, which represents 5% of the money distributed in the world. And our betting is nearly $814 million, which is less than 1% of the gambling of the world. Where are we strong? We are strong in breeding. OSAF holds 27,000 mares, nearly 2,000 stallions, and 17,000 um, uh, foals uh, were born last year, which means 16% of the horses born in the world. OSAF has imported in the last six years into, uh, into uh, the region, mainly from Europe and America, 5,200 mainly mares, and have done a remarkable effort to shuttle horses of the best, of, of, of the best uh, quality of Europe and America and Europe principally, like Giant Cosway that went to Argentina, Shiroko Amanduro that went to Brazil, Scott Daddy that went to Chile, also with Fusaichi Pegasus, Roman Ruler, King's Best, and many others, as you can see here. And that has been a, a tremendous effort for us. And the most important thing um, is that we generate in total two million source of employment, which means that we have a very big social responsibility. Every decision that we make affects people, not only horses. Well, all these are the organizations that are members to OSAF, that I will pass them quickly from the different countries. The new structure. 
As you all know, uh, last year, from since uh, the end of last year, um, Mr. Marcel Sarur is the new chairman of OSAF, and each of the main 11 racetracks of, um, of South America have put a, a director in OSAF. And we have created, so as that everybody is represented and have participation in OSAF, eight different committees. Following the technical committees that IFHA has. The purpose of all these committees is to regulate and harmonize common topics among South American countries in compliance with IFHA regulation and international agreement of breeding, racing, and wagering. For us, the two principal um, committees have been the last years, one, the medication and laboratories and the doping control. We have organized in South America three, in the past four years, South American doping control laboratories meetings. We have the remarkable participation of more than 100 vets and chemistry from the different racetracks and jockey clubs every year. And we have invited as speakers in the first two, Dr. Roland DeVolz and Dr. Ed Houghton. And this year, we had the presence of Professor Thomas Tobin. The mission was accomplished. In the first uh, two uh, laboratories meetings, the principal, um, the principal uh, matters that we spoke was about the new technologies, about uh, the new techniques, the thresholds, the screening limits, corticoids, everything about regular, regulatory uh, uh, regulations, about um, detection times, and, um, and the use of Lasix and phenylbutazone. The mission was accomplished because in all South American countries, uh, or South countries, uh, in one way or another, Lasix has been banned partially uh, from 2013 onwards. I say partially because some, not all the countries uh, have the same rules, like Brazil has banned it from all um, their graded stake races. Well, and I, I won't go from country by country, but what I can say is that from 2013, LASIKs has been banned in one way or another um, from all races. In another very important issue that was um, that was uh, given by Dr. Ed Houghton was the harmonization of, of the rules, the new positive drugs. Um, and we really think in OSAF that one of the most important things that we have to do is the interlaboratory control. And that uh, we are promoting to do inside South America at least three interlaboratory controls every year with blinded um, examples. Our other very important issue was the handicappers and the ratings. Um, I, um, we have um, worked in the last uh, four years, and we had uh, done more than four meetings be uh, between all the handicappers of, from South America. And this year, at the end of the year, um, the South American ratings are going to be introduced into the Weatherby's WTR system in Hong Kong. So from now on, we know we have a very big task to do. Uh, we, are, we, we have also created the Graded Stake Committee to revise all our stakes every year, like you do in all your countries. And we are going to bring, um, as we said yesterday in IRPAC, a program uh, that we finalized, um, luckily, before three years. Well, these are the best, uh, regarding to our ratings, the best horses in South America from last year. And these are pictures of all our meetings. Another very important issue for us was this year that we had the meeting of all our keepers and boss of stud books in South America to join and have only one export certificate to all of us 
and to discuss all the protocols in common related to the reception and compilation and delivery of information following the rules of ISBC and IFHA. We have also breeders, owners committees, harmonizations of rules, and, and this is a very important to topic because in, in, in our game um, we um, have different interpretations to the same rules in, even inside each of our countries. We don't penalize the same faults in, in, our, in, 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 in all our racetracks. Another very important thing that we do in South America is the Gran Premio Latinoamericano. The Gran Premio Latinoamericano is an itinerant race that is held every year in the month of March and each of the countries, the four of, of the countries that are in part one and Uruguay that is in part two that we believe that should go back to part one, picks four of their best, country, of their best horses and sends to the race, race track that is organizing the race that year. The race has a minimum purse of $400,000. And this is the list of all the winners with all their flags. Which are our treats? The horse industry in South America is absolutely regulated by governmental bodies. The, daily, the development of other games and betting on, 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 on other, other sports and the slots uh, has been expo exponential. Today, besides Chile, uh, all the South American countries, their purses in races, more than 75% comes not from the gambling on horses. Another very big problem we have is the movement uh, to move between ourselves. We cannot compete more against each other because the difficulty that we have to move horses from one country to another. As I explained it in the SBC, for us, besides the cost of the transport is as difficult to send a horse to America than to send it to Uruguay that is only 300 kilometers away. What are the opportunities that South America gives you? South America has a natural resource very beneficial for the breeding and environment of the breeding and the industry and also even today the relationship between the cost of breeding the cost of training against the purses is extremely convenient. Which are our challenges? We think that we have lost in the last maybe 20, 30 years a lot of popularity and the new technology is the only way we can bring new turf funds to the industry. We are developing the gambling in portable computers, in mobile phones, tablets, and internet wagering. This and the movement of, of horses between us so, so as to be able to compare our ratings is the more important thing. Another thing that Mr. Chairman Marcel Sarur has asked me especially to say is that in Chile they are working for the, um, for the integrity of their signal and, um, and their races with the rest of the European community. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the video.